Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to be a review of a problem you might see in maybe the second exam for my microprocessor assembly language course. So this is just a representative problem. And so the problem here uses the Irvine library and, you know, and uses whatever else you got to do to get it all done. So you're just kind of following along and just, just kind of just using everything and just kind of doing what you got to do. So in my previous lecture, and there are, there's a PowerPoint presentation on how to, you know, how to set up a lot of these things. And I've just been using these over the years, so I don't really have to, I might have to look for the moving the, the cursor, uh, but maybe not. We'll have to see how things go. So first thing I want to do is clear the screen. So I'll just call clear screen. You could put it however you want. I just, I wish it would just, you could just type out the whole thing. But anyway, maintain an accumulator in a register of your choice and set it to zero. I can just, I'm just going to, I can just use EAX if I want to. I'm going to initialize that giant register to zero. And so change the text output color to black and foreground and then prompt the user how many iterations. So let me just start by printing out. Let's just make sure this is another one where I don't know. I haven't used it enough to have it completely memorized, but let's just, I can work my way to it. So I'm going to say, this is my prompt, and I'm going to say it's all bytes, and it's going to be, and oops, sorry, it's going to be how many iterations. Iterations, question mark, space, comma, zero. Need that null terminating character, otherwise it might print out things that you're not expecting it to. So right at the moment here, I'm going to move into the EDX register, the offset of this prompt pointer, memory location, and I'm going to call write string. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I know there's a CRLF somewhere, and I know I'm going to need a wait message. I can see my screen, oh, not wait message, wait message. And so you can see here, if I do, here's how many iterations, question mark, and you know, so I have something working for me now, and now I can, I can see if I change the color appropriately. So I do need to move into the uh, AX register, EAX register, whatever, I guess, no, I have to, oh shoot, I'm going to use it, I'm going to use EBX instead, because... I'm already using EDX for my prompt, and I need that for every print. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need EAX for other things here, so it would it makes sense to use something that is you know because I need that for a lot of these function calls. So it makes sense to use something a little off the the beaten path here. So I'm gonna use EP, EBX as my register choice. So now I'm gonna move into the EAX register, and I can just say okay, black foreground plus green background. I can never remember which character is which. And so what I can say here is and uh, black plus 16 times green. I'll either do it exactly right or exactly wrong, and I'm the way my odds always turn out, I'll do it exactly wrong. That's because there's one byte that indicates the color, and 16, as we've learned in previous, you know, previous uh, lectures, 16 can be represented with four bits. That's a hexadecimal digit. So basically every byte is two hex digits. And so hex digit for the foreground, hex digit for the background, and I'm allowed the 16 colors. And each of these colors is stored in the Irvine library. So I don't have to come up with numbers, zero for black and I'm just at 15 for white, 14 for yellow and so forth and so on. So I can call my uh, set text color and then try this out. Let's see what happens. What do I get? So let's see. Black foreground and green background. I did it. Hey, I, I got it right. Either, I either had to revert, you know, if I didn't have this right, I'd probably have to reverse that. So yes, I've changed the text color. I've prompted the user for this kind of stuff. And now call write string. And what I can do here is uh, go ahead and uh, take the result of, uh, where's my iteration here? Here's my write string. I can call read int. And so that will take in from the user, because this is prompt the user for input using that value. Have the user input their choice in the EAX register. That's what this does. So I don't have to do anything for that line. And so what that will do is, it basically is your CN. The user types something in, this converts it into an integer value, and then it stores it in the EAX register. So good. 
So now what I can do here is for that many iterations, do stuff. And my, my iterator or my accumulator is EBX and my, you know, and EAX. But what I can do here, because this is a loop, right, for that many iterations, what I can do here is I can loop again. Let me just break this up here because this is how a loop, the loop statement works. This is one of the first things that we, we learned here when it comes, this is the easy loop. It's not a very powerful loop, but it is an easy loop to use. And so what I can do here before we even start, because I need that ECX register to hold the loop, the loop uh, value. And so I can take whatever came, came in from the user, move it into ECX, and then I can loop again. Because remember what this loop instruction does is it immediately decrements ECX and then asks, is ECX zero? And so it loops and it loops and it loops and it loops and it loops. And so, so there we go. So, uh, okay, so now I can go ahead, oops, I keep clicking the wrong thing here. I can pr uh, prompt the user for input, what value to add. I'll just call it what, I'll say what value to add, question mark, comma zero. Move this down a little tiny bit. I'm gonna need this, I'm just gonna call it total here. Cause I'm, I, just, I just see that below, the sum of inputs, so I don't have to do it later. Since I'm here is, I'm a zero. Okay, so I've got my three print statements here. So now here is my loop. Prompt the user, so move into the edx register, the offset of what, call write string. Okay, have the user input into the eax register. That's just call a read int again. Okay, and then add that input to the accumulator. So add into the ebx register, my register of choice, whatever's in eax. And that should do that part of it because, and then the loop again. ECX never gets modified outside of, or you know, inside the loop other than the loop instruction itself, which is doing its job. And so this will count down from five to four to three to two to one to zero, and it'll finish up exactly like we expect it to when we hit the, when the ECX register gets reduced down to zero. Okay, so that covers the loop portion. This covers the pre-loop, this covers the loop, and now we gotta do the, the last final things here I already printed the new line character and did the the pause, so I just have these four these four lines to go to finish up the deal here. And so let's go ahead and do that outside down here. And so delay 1,000 milliseconds. Move into the EAX register 1,000 and call delay. Okay. Move the cursor to 15.7. This is another one of those. I know I know what I have to do. I just don't remember exactly how. I'll do it right. I'll move 15 into DL and I'll move uh, 7 into DH and I will call set uh, or go to go to XY. Go to XY. Let me see if that's what it is. Can't remember text bit, you know, whatever, build tag. Oh, everything seems to be happy. So I think go to XY is the proper proper function call. Print the string, so move into the EA, EDX register, the offset of, what did I call it, total. And then call uh, write string. And then, print, and then print the accumulator value. I'm gonna have to move into the EAX register, EBX, and then I can call write int. Let's see what happens. The only thing I'm worried about is, did I do my, did I do my cursor positioning? Okay, so we're just accumulating, right? So if I go, oh, I want five iterations, and I start adding up one, 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 one. There's my one, there's my one second delay, and my sum is five. So I, let's just see here. I said to go to x is 15, y is seven. So one, two, three, four, five, or zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. And this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So hey, I better go buy a lottery ticket because I did the 50-50 shot twice. I, <laughs> three to one odds I beat already today. I mean, that never happens. I am the unluckiest person on earth. So that covers pretty much everything. You could try this again with different values and I go, okay, I'll eight iterations and I'll just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should get uh, what, uh, 21, 36 out of this. One second delay and there's my 36. And that pretty much covers it. This does as many iterations as possible. It, it sums up everything as, ex as expected. Let me see, let me get this on one line or one page. Oh boy, 
<laughs> oh, there we go. That's the best I can do for what we got going here. And that is basically how I would do something like that for my, you know, and get full points for my homework or for my exam problem here, part of part two. Um, so as always, I might have misspoke or said something and done something that was wrong. I am not a perfect person by any means. So if that's the case, just be nice and comment below or send me an email and I will be happy to correct my mistakes um, as I go through things. So thanks for sticking it out with me. Um, this is an exam two problem, so good luck on your first exam that deals with the assembly language in this course. And uh, please work with me and, my, and our tutors if you need any further assistance before the exam time. So thanks everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you. See you later.